I'm not too sure how to introduce this segment here, but this is a 1953 Chevy truck, or at least the remains of it, that we've been uh, turning into a radical custom. And today we're going to do even more customization with some uh, 1949 Cadillac convertible parts. Basically, I just really want to get to work, but uh, like this stuff is rough rough but man is it ever cool so the goal for today is just going to be to see what's involved in grafting these 1949 cadillac fins and taillights onto uh, the back of this truck here as you can see we've uh, certainly got our work cut out for us here So at some point I'm going to have to get new uh, taillight housings and this uh, apparatus here as it's obviously broken for the fuel door. Uh, it is cool though how all this works, like uh, this just appears to be a push button. Obviously it's a little uh, damaged but uh, pretty neat and I'd like to kind of retain that. The other option is I just uh, get a taillight lens and then French it into here without any trim around it at all. But I do kind of like the idea of using all this. The lenses are fairly easy to come by. These are a little harder to find, but they're not unobtainium. But I guess not a real priority at the moment. I just really want this right now. <laughs> As you can probably tell by the uh, expert repair here, uh, this uh, Cadillac, uh, it was no spring chicken even when it was still on the road. It was, uh, she's had a hard life. I'm just gonna take care of this dent at the top here real quick. Might as well. That's how it appears from the inside there. To, uh, cut this down in order to uh, get it to fit in the back of my dad's truck and uh, not really a big deal because it's actually uh, quite rusty um, see there's already holes all through here uh, so we're gonna end up just uh, remaking the whole uh, front portion of this but I'm just gonna tack weld this back on for now just to help 
get the visual and then I'll just kind of make like a I'll sculpt it out and make kind of a buck I guess and then I'll know what shape that I can make the metal piece and it'll just be it'll be cleaner to make this all in one piece rather than you know 800 little pieces welded together and faster too faster is good because this is YouTube and you don't want to see me do the same thing over and over again forever I know by now some of you are probably wondering uh, why I didn't just graft the uh, fin onto this quarter panel. Wouldn't that be a lot easier? And there's a couple reasons for that. Uh, the first reason is even though this is all missing here and needs to be fabricated, I actually like the shape of this curve a little better than I like this curve. Um, so. You know, I would rather spend more time fabricating now rather than save time and then end up with something that I'm not 100% happy with. So that is why we are using the whole quarter panel. Of course, the other reason why we're not just welding this on top as maybe you can see already this Cadillac fin or taillight or whatever is substantially larger than the Chevy quarter panel like by quite a bit so there's not really any way to graph this on to the top of here you know without having a, like a weird transition or without having to remake the whole top anyways And you can't have a vehicle in Western Canada without a couple of bullet holes. So we got one right here and one at the back here. So we might as well fix those while we're in the neighborhood. This guy here is going to be a little more tricky. It's a lot more of a hole type of situation, but uh, you're still the the flap where the metal's torn away. So we're just going to kind of try heating that up and, and hammering it back into place and see if we can, we can get it closed up again.
So there's our completed bullet hole repair at the back here. And there's our other one. So there's still imperfections and whatever. I'm not trying to get it flawless at this stage. I just want the hole gone. We're also still rusted out down here. But I haven't decided what I'm doing for a back bumper yet. So I don't want to build all of this and then find out that this is going to get extended down or whatever we're doing there. So we'll just focus on the, this stuff for now and there'll be plenty of time to, to work with the rest of this later on. time has come to cut off this old quarter panel and I'm not too sure uh, how that's gonna go there's probably gonna be a lot of dust possibly a large fire product is cracking. How could that have happened?
I guess uh, right about now would probably be a good time to mention that uh, I'm not actually building this out of little bits of metal tack welded together and then plaster of Paris and tuck taped and bondoed. I wish it would be this easy to build vehicles but I kind of like this to hold together for you know more than a week. So what I'm actually doing here is I'm creating a, a buck or I don't even know if you'd call it a buck but basically I'm trying to get all these shapes uh, sculpted out and from there then I can use these shapes as patterns to build all the steel panels and so basically we're going to be building all of this out of steel, um, all of this out of steel and obviously fixing all the rust and whatever else we have to do but uh, part of the, the challenge for building things out of steel 
and shaping sheet metal is just knowing uh, what I'm trying to achieve. So by doing all this, uh, I'm able to know exactly what has to shrink, what has to stretch, you know, the, the entire shape of, of the panel is, is going to be all pre-planned out for me. So I'm not just uh, uh, whistling in the wind. Is this the right way to do this? Absolutely not. This is just the way I'm doing it. Um, I guess I was kind of inspired by the way that uh, they do clay modeling on new cars. Uh, or, you know, I think that started back in the 1920s and I believe they still do it on new cars today, uh, even though it's a lot more automated, but uh, the, the clay they use is quite expensive. So I'm just using random stuff that I already have laying around because I'm cheap and I don't have a lot of money to put into this project. I actually mentioned in the last video um, what I was doing as well and that this was just, you know, I was just patterning everything out to, to build it out of metal. And a couple people thought that I was actually building uh, the whole truck out of foam and uh, plaster of Paris and Bondo. And one person in particular uh, said some very hurtful things. Um, and I, I may have instigated some of that, uh, but still, uh, you know, I have feelings too. And I did mention in that video several times that I was building everything out of metal. Uh, so I don't quite, you know, the, the level of reading comprehension or listening skills uh, with uh, today's society is, is a little concerning. But anyways, I, I thought we would just take a quick break here and uh, let everyone know if you're new here that this is not permanent. I wish it were, but uh, uh, life's not that easy. So this will be getting created out of metal, but I just need to have a pattern to create it out of metal because that's the way my brain works. So I'm sure you have a better, faster, easier way of doing it. And that's fine. This is just the way I'm doing it. Well, there you have it folks. Uh, we got our Cadillac fins temporarily installed there or our full quarter panels, I guess. And that was the right choice to use these full quarter panels. Uh, this is very close or, well, this is, the, this is the vision I've always had. And here it is. So as usual, uh, things are kind of down to the wire here and I ran out of time to completely 
get this refined. So there's some rough edges along the bottom. And I also had to kind of tweak in our fadeaway area a bit. And we ended up with a low spot here, which you can probably see in the light. So we got uh, more sculpting to do there. Uh, but you know, this is YouTube, so it only has to kind of sort of look good on camera for about 30 seconds. And so we're just gonna leave this alone for now. So the next step is to start sculpting out the bed sides and the tailgate and figuring out what how that's all gonna interact with the rest of this uh, mess we got here. And that was actually supposed to be our next step in the last episode, but we got distracted with our Cadillac quarter panels here. But that's just the way this goes. The bed sides are gonna kind of be rounded on the top and they're gonna kind of have a gradual taper towards the rear. So they're not gonna just be like flat across like uh, a conventional truck box, I guess. So how much or what exact shape is gonna be, we won't know until we start on it, but that's, uh, that's the plan anyways. Just very pleased that I ended up with these Cadillac quarter panels. Uh, this is just a lot closer to the original hallucination that I had or vision or whatever you wanna call it for this truck. I just enjoy the way that the fadeaway comes down and I, I like this rounded shape a little better. Um, and then I like how it comes down and then swoops back up for the, uh, the fin there. Uh, these were originally uh, inspired by the P-38 Lightning, uh, which is my favorite World War II aircraft. And uh, it inspired Harley Earl to do these, these swoopy fins here on the back. So it's kind of fitting that uh, all this stuff that I like is uh, ending up on this stupid truck we're building. So uh, these, you know, these were okay. They would have worked. We could have made this work and it probably would have been okay. Um, I just, uh, these just have a lot more of a kind of a spear shape at the front. And again, it would have worked, but uh, uh, you know, if we can make it 1% better, and have Cadillac taillights on it, then yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna do whatever it takes to make this happen. The vision for this truck, uh, in case you're new here, is to create uh, kind of late 40s, early 1950s, uh, traditional period correct uh, custom. So we're doing everything uh, kind of the way that uh, it might've been done back then. Obviously nobody's ever put Cadillac uh, quarter panels on a 1953 Chevy truck, at least not that I know of, but that's not gonna stop us. And adding these Cadillac quarter panels onto custom cars back in the day was quite popular. Kind of a way to spruce up your, your older car and, and make it look, uh, look more modern, which was the whole idea behind customizing back in the day. So I uh, see a lot of early customs with this, this treatment here, again, uh, nobody, as far as I know, has done this to a 1953 Chevy truck, but that's what we're doing and that's the vision. So we're, not, we're trying to avoid using any parts newer than 1953. So that's the mentality of this project. I didn't think I'd ever be able to find uh, Cadillac quarter panels uh, in this day and age. You know, it was pretty, pretty easy to find these probably back around 1951 or so, but uh, these don't exactly grow on trees anymore. And to find them at like a regular pick and pull yard, uh, it's pretty, pretty crazy. But uh, we got these and I'll show you what else we got there. So this is the, the grill out of the 49 Cadillac. And this is the grill that I wanted for this truck uh, right from the start, but I didn't think I'd ever be able to find or afford one. But uh, we found one. I'm... I'm not sure if I'm using the corners yet. I might just uh, use the centerpiece, uh, kind of like on uh, the Jack Stewart uh, Ford, but uh, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. See all this is, uh, it's, uh, it's a little rough, but the grill itself uh, is, is actually not bad. Definitely usable, so I'm, I'm very excited that we got this grill. This is the grill I wanted and we managed to find one. We also got a bumper, 49 Cadillac front bumper. So I think I'm gonna use that. I wasn't sure 
Uh, but as soon as I got it home and I kind of looked at it, it's like, yeah, I, I need to use this. And got to give a shout out to uh, Scott over at uh, the Cold War Motors YouTube channel. Uh, not only did he uh, kind of find and video this 49 Cadillac uh, in the wrecking yard, uh, he also uh, came out to the wrecking yard with me and helped me get all these parts and talked me into this bumper because I wasn't going to get it, but he talked me into it and then helped me remove it. So huge shout out to him. If you're not already watching Cold War Motors on YouTube, you'd better go check him out. Uh, he's got a lot of awesome projects. So uh, I would highly recommend you check out his channel. And again, a uh, big thank you to him for helping me uh, grab these parts and making my uh, hallucination become a reality. Uh, some of you have also brought to my attention that uh, the channel has, has reached 50,000 subscribers and I don't really pay attention to a whole lot of that. Uh, I've always kind of just uh, done the opposite of uh, what all the successful channels do and that's been my uh, mission statement right from the start but uh, we got to 50,000 I guess that's something and I know a lot of the the big channels they they do giveaways at 50,000 subscribers and uh, they usually give away like a car or something so uh, I started you know thinking well yeah I guess 50,000 is pretty special we should uh, give something away and I've got a lot of cars you know as you know so uh, but that's not what we're giving away you know I'm not out here to buy uh, viewers or subscribers or whatever and I don't know how these other channels are doing it but I don't make enough money from this to give away a car anyways so uh, I don't quite understand that but uh, I got something better yes I do we're gonna give away my beloved smoking jacket this is the original uh, Carter's hairstyling uh, costume and when we hit 5,000 subscribers a couple years ago I actually lovingly restored this jacket and I promised that I was going to give it away to one of you at 50,000 uh, subscribers and the day has come and I was hoping this day would never come because uh, well I need this jacket to stay warm and winter's going to be arriving here shortly but I'm, I'm a man of my words so I'm going to give this away and it's it's the most vile and disgusting prize ever given away by a YouTube channel. Uh, this thing stinks. It's been laying on the ground in my garage for the last two years. Uh, it's made out of Bondo and duct tape and zip ties. And uh, it's just a terrible thing. But if, uh, if you would like to win this terrible prize, uh, you know, leave a comment on this video and I'll randomly select one of your comments. If for some reason uh, you don't want this uh, beautiful uh, artifact here, um, just leave a note in your comment and then I'll just select somebody else. I, I will do my best to, to ship this out to you uh, wherever you are in the world. It is probably technically a biohazard, so I mean, they may just hold it at the border, I don't know, but I'll do my best to, <laughs> to get this to you, I guess. And so here's our, here's our big prize, the Carter Auto Restyling Smoking Jacket, uh, circa, I don't know, 2021 or whenever we did this. I'll leave uh, uh, a link in the description to the video where we restored this jacket so you can see all the loving care uh, and attention to detail that went into the restoration. And so you know exactly what you're getting and you can brag to your friends and whatever else you want to do with it. So there you go, there's our, there's our big prize. And also, uh, thank you to everyone who has been uh, uh, buying uh, a t-shirt or, uh, or a sticker 
Uh, we have these uh, for sale on our store, uh, carterautorestyling.com. And uh, if you buy one, it, it, uh, it helps to, to kind of uh, fund uh, this nonsense here. Uh, it really does, uh, does help uh, kind of keep this thing going. If I was to simply rely on uh, the income from just making videos, uh, this project would not be possible. This is uh, quite ambitious for one person in a two car garage uh, to try and tackle by himself, but we're, we're doing our best uh, here to make it happen. And I also wanna give a big thank you to everyone who has sent in donations via PayPal or Super Thanks or the members here on YouTube, as well as uh, the folks over on Patreon. Uh, again, uh, this project would not be possible without all those folks. And so it is, uh, it is uh, greatly appreciated and it really does help me to continue making these videos and working on this project. I apologize for the lack of content lately. Uh, a lot of this has just been me thinking and measuring and I've also been slacking off a little bit and just driving my 35 and trying to enjoy a couple weeks of summer. But, uh, you know, we'll get back on it hard here. And uh, I was actually a little worried that we were gonna run out of things to do this winter, but I don't think we're gonna be running out of uh, work anytime soon on this. So lots to come on the chicken truck. So thank you again for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Thank mm -hmm. you.